Welcome everyone. We're going to do a pranayama breathwork meditation. So you can start to get comfortable while I talk a little bit about pranayama and then we will get straight into the practice. Pranayama is a Sanskrit word and prana means vital life force. In other words, the breath. And yama means control or expansion. And so the exercise we'll do together is to expand and invigorate our breath and therefore also our life force. This acts as a powerful opening into meditation as the energies within us are being cleaned out and purified, especially with this particular pranayama called hamsa, which is a little vigorous, as you'll see. It's going to be like turning on a powerful vacuum cleaner internally, moving around and cleaning all the dust and dirt within us so that we can live in a more energetic, cleaner environment. This breathing exercise can be done by anyone, no matter who you are or what you practice. You know, there's so much thinking in any spiritual group or source of information and so many ideas and it's all just a play of form but if you don't recognize it as a play of form of thought forms and beliefs and concepts then we get easily identified with them easily caught up in them and so meditation and when it comes to spiritual practice of yoga, prayer, pranayama, anything, it's an opportunity to let our minds rest, to get away from the dimension of thinking, of analyzing, to create some space between the observer and the observed, and at the same time to create a union between the observer and the observed, to create a space between what we call the I, the me, and between the thoughts and the beliefs that we identify with and attach to. So, is it such a big ask? to let the mind stop this for these next moments during our practice we should hope not right and we should let the mind rest and be able to just put it aside for a moment no matter all our problems and all our attachments it's all there and it always will be even when we pick it up straight after so let's make sure we're in a comfortable position with our back straight a little bit, but not tensed. You can make sure you're in a comfortable chair. Be aware of your posture and be aware of your body and the movements within your own mind. Let's leave everything behind us for these next moments all our frustrations, passions, dreams, fantasies, angers, anxieties. Leave it all behind just for this practice. Maybe someone said something to you and you've been playing scenes in your head about what you'll say or want to say to them or maybe you've been thinking about all your beliefs spiritual or political ideas or maybe you have a lot to do today and you feel like if you don't think about them 
they won't get done. Ask yourself if sitting here and now thinking about them is going to help. You can always attend to your business after, even without thinking about them here and now. And this requires us to be aware of our compulsions, habits, and the need to get our claws into things that we think are our problems. Become aware for a moment of the peculiar sensation of being aware of all these problems within ourselves. No matter what problem you have, become aware of being aware of your problems. Like a mirror facing itself, we can also become aware of ourselves. Become aware of consciousness itself. And through becoming aware of ourselves and our own awareness, we can ground ourselves here and now. Ultimately, there's nothing you need to do. There's nothing that needs to be done. It is the opposite of doing. We just want to be and let the mind be at rest. By becoming aware of our compulsion and need to do, we create a dimension of space around our doing. So, let the mind be at rest and let the body be at rest. Let's contemplate the breath. You can, for a moment, place your hand on your lower abdomen and become aware of the natural cycle of your breath. Is your abdomen expanding as you breathe or is it your shoulders or lungs that are expanding? Try, with a little effort, bring the breath down to the roots of your being. And breathe deeply and naturally. Now let your hands rest and be ready to keep your body and your hands very still for the remainder of this practice without stress or tension, be comfortable with letting the physical body be still, just as we aspire to let the mind also be still. The body and mind are going to move for the rest of the day, is it not? They always move when we are not practicing. And so we need a little love, a little grace to allow ourselves to have this moment of stillness, this moment of union. And as you start to feel more still and more relaxed, letting go of any tension in the body Let's contemplate the breath. This curious sensation and phenomena that allows us to live and that if we didn't breathe, we wouldn't have this physical body. This breath that goes within ourselves, we cannot see. But within the atoms, within the air that exists all around us, 
contains this wonderful quality of prana. And let's feel as we breathe in, there is a cool air coming within our bodies. And as we breathe out, there is a heat. Let's feel how our bodies appreciate this breath, this conscious breath. Feel the undercurrent of joy and well-being that comes with just being with the breath. Let's enter our bodies, our emotions, our feelings, and be intimately with the breath. And for the next few minutes, we're going to start a pranayama breathing cycle. And we will breathe in through our nose, deeply and slowly, while reciting the mantra, Ham. And as we breathe out, we breathe out through our mouth with a short but relaxed out breath, slightly reciting the mantra Sa. Just to demonstrate for you a few cycles. Sa. And on the out breath, there may be a little gentle contraction of the abdomen. That is fine. And we breathe in and deeply slowly. You can follow me exactly how I do it, or you can follow your own pattern. It doesn't matter. Just be mindful that the inhale should be longer and deeper than the exhale. And we'll do this for a few minutes. And the entire time, no matter what sensation or energy you feel, we will keep the body and mind still. And when we finish, we'll go immediately into meditation. So now that we are relaxed and aligned with ourselves, let's ground ourselves with this breath work.
Feeling relaxed, we continue the breath. Feeling more relaxed into well being and invigoration. Feeling an entire union with our body and mind. And let's stop the breath. And let's feel the body and the mind and the energy and movements of our entire being. No matter what you can feel now, go into a natural state. And let the mind and let the body breathe naturally. Let the breath become natural, uncontrolled. Just as no thoughts can overwhelm you, bodily sensations cannot too. They are just perceptions in your consciousness that come and go. We may feel perceptions and sensations in our head, in our heart, in our legs and arms. But we, consciousness, is rooted in being. in this inner strength. Inner peace. Like a tree rooted in the earth. Thoughts may come in Ideas may come in, but we are rooted in being, not in thinking. We are rooted in the heart, not in the head. Thought forms come and go. And we can apply this principle of things coming and going to any aspects of our life, such as people, conversations, life situations, locations, where we work, where we live, what we say, what we believe, what others say, our age, our appearance. It all comes and goes in this ebb and flow and rhythm of life. And we abide in that. We find strength in impermanence. Nothing can overwhelm you.
Nothing can take you here and now. Nothing can tempt you. You are a conscious being rooted in awareness. How can external things take your attention without you wanting to be taken? It's an illusion to think that awareness is taken externally. Our whole processes of consciousness are within ourselves. And when we come back to ourselves like this, we realize that we have full domain over our consciousness, over our thoughts, over our emotions. Be at peace in this. Continue to breathe naturally. Become aware of any sounds in the room. Become aware of the silence between sounds or surrounding sounds. Become aware of the feeling of clothes on your skin or the sensation of touch. Is the mind still looking to grasp onto ideas, identifications? You may have to ask the mind, what does it want? What does it seek? Don't let the mind answer with words. The deeper aspect of overcoming all our problems, confusions, and frustrations is to realize that we are not separate from those problems and frustrations. The answer is never separate from the problem. And we can begin to contemplate and feel the meaning of union. That no matter how much we may hate a problem, we are never ultimately separate from it. And through coming into union 
with our mind, our problems, our ego, we can begin to see the solutions and feel what we either need to do or need to let go of. Freedom begins when we no longer seek to identify with beliefs, with issues, with struggles, material or spiritual. When we no longer identify with our life and who we are or who we think we are and the image of ourselves, is there not great freedom in not being identified with the image of yourself? With the idea of yourself. I am a man, I am a woman, I am this or that. Be free from this. The deeper nature is far more profound and sublime. The dimension of consciousness, which is connected to all things, to beyond the body, beyond the mind, beyond yourself, beyond this planet, beyond this cosmos of creation, beyond all of this, there is a dimension that we can abide in. It has many names. Some call it higher consciousness, some call it God, some call it the heart, some call it the Tao. Some call it formlessness. And bringing this dimension into our lives is what gives us the strength, wisdom, and insight to expand and grow spiritually. And in this state, in this realization, we become aware of the peculiar sensation of being involved with ourselves. And that by not being so involved, we realize that this dimension has a particular quality to it of gentleness, subtleness, which in human interpretation can be felt as compassion, 
and living in this gentle compassion. A higher and subtle energy begins to enter our field of being. And we naturally spread this empathy to our entire experience, to other beings, to the cosmos itself. And in gratefulness and gratitude for these moments and having the ability to be free for at least some moments from our suffering and our restlessness, we can spread this wish to our fellow to our fellow beings. May all beings be happy. May all beings be blissful. May all beings be in peace.